Hello grade 12s and welcome to this lesson on the application of the similarity theorem in the Pythagoras theorem. Let's join Johnny as he explains how to do this to his student Kanya. Let's look at an interesting way in which we use similar triangles to prove another theorem that you know well, Pythagoras theorem. You have used this theorem in problem solving for trick problems, geometry, and possibly in algebra too for the last few years of high school mathematics. Do you remember what Pythagoras theorem states? The theorem states that the square on the hypotenuse of a right angled triangle is equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides. So, if KLM is a right angle triangle, the theorem proves that KM squared is equal to KL squared plus LM squared. This theorem has fascinated mathematicians for centuries and it has been proved in several different ways. We are going to prove it using the proportion theorem and similarity. First, we need to construct a line LP that intersects KM at 90 degrees at P. Have a look at the diagram. Can you see a way of showing that the two small triangles, KLP and LPM, are similar to the big triangle, KLM? If we can show that they are equiangular, then we know that they are similar. If they are similar, then we'll be able to use the proportions of their sides to work out the squares of the sides. Look at triangle LPM. We know that angle at P is 90. And so L2 plus M is 90 because of sum of angles in a triangle. So M must be 90 minus L2. But angle L is also 90 in triangle KLM. So L1 must be 90 minus L2. That's the same as M. And L1 plus K is 90 in triangle KPL. So K must be equal to L2. So have we found equiangular triangles? We certainly have. In triangles KLM and KPL, we have K is common to both. L and P are both 90 degrees and M equals L1. So these triangles are equiangular and therefore similar. In triangles LPM and triangle KLM, M is common to both. P and L are both 90 degrees and L2 equals K. So these triangles are equiangular and therefore also similar. Now, look at this carefully. We can use the proportion theorem to say that the sides are proportional. First, in triangles KLM and KPL, LM divided by KM equals PM divided by LM. In triangles LPM and KLM, KL divided by KM equals KP divided by KL. Now, we can use some of our algebra knowledge. If you cross multiply these fractions, you get LM squared equal to KM times PM. And KL squared equal to KM times KP. We have come to something with the two shorter sides of triangle KLM squared. If we add KL squared and LM squared, we get them equal to KM times PM plus KM times KP. Taking a common factor of KM, we are left with PM plus KP in the bracket. Look at the diagram again. PM plus KP 
is the same as KM. So we have arrived at the theorem. KL squared plus LM squared equals KM squared. Here is the whole theorem again. We are given KLM and construct LP perpendicular to KM. We want to prove Pythagoras theorem that states that in a right angled triangle, the sum of the two shorter sides squared equals the long side squared. We work out which angles are equal in the three triangles created and then show that the big triangle is similar to both the smaller triangles. Then we use the similarity to write down ratios of the sides that will help us towards our goal. When we cross multiply, we create squares on sides LM and KL, the short sides of the big triangle. When we add them together and simplify the left-hand side of the equation, we are able to show that the two sides squared are equal to KM squared. This proof of Pythagoras theorem using similarity is not complicated. You need to spend some time working out which ratios to use in order to get to the end result. Now, at least we have a few theorems on hand to use in solving some riders. Want to look at the typical question from a grade 12 exam paper? Yes, please. I don't always know where to start. First, list everything you know. Let's take a look at this diagram. What is given? AQ is parallel to RT. The ratio of BQ to QC is 3 to 5, and the ratio of BR to RA is 1 to 2. Yes. Have a good look at what information you are given. You should recognize which of these triangles have proportional sides based on the parallel lines RT and AQ. The first question is, if BT equals K, calculate TQ in terms of K. Can you identify which triangle you need to work in? What triangle has sides BT and TQ? BT and TQ are part of triangle BQA. Correct. BR and RA are also part of this triangle. Using this proportion theorem, what ratio can we say are equal? Well, AQ is parallel to RT. So by the proportion theorem, we can say that BT divided by QT equals BR divided by RA. AQ is parallel to RT. So by the proportion theorem, we can say that BT divided by QT equals BR divided by RA. Replace BT with K and put this equal to half. Then cross multiply and what do we find? TQ equal to 2K. Here's the next part of the question. Calculate the numerical value of CP divided by PR. Identify the triangle that has CP and PR as one side. Are you going to use triangle BRC or triangle RTC? Be careful. The proportion theorem can be used on triangle RTC, but it cannot be used on triangle BRC. Do you know why not? We don't have a line parallel to one of the sides. Yes. So in triangle CTR, we know that CP divided by PR is equal to CQ divided by QT. To find the numerical value of this ratio, we can use any information that we calculated from the first question. BT equal to K and QT equal to 2K. That makes BQ equal to 3K. We know the ratio of BQ 
to CQ to be 3 to 5. That helps because that means CQ equals 5K. So now we know that CQ to QT equals 5K to 2K. And that's also equal to CP to PR. So we get CP divided by PR equals 5 divided by 2. And that answers the question. I think that's enough for today. Thank you for joining us, Great Tolves. Remember to look at the task video for this section in the Advanced Euclidean Geometry task video. You'll also be able to learn more about Advanced Euclidean Geometry on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.